The 15cm Nabel Werfer 41. This is a weapon that shows up in a handful of movies and video games, delivering high explosive rockets. However, this weapon's original intended use, at least on paper, included delivering smoke and poison gas, used with units of the Nebeltruppen, or smoke troops. The weapon is not only distinct in its six-barrel design, but most distinct in the noise it makes when firing, leading allies to nickname it Screaming Mimi and Moaning Mini. Despite the weapon's unusual looks compared to a mortar or artillery, the weapon was both inexpensive to make and produced in fairly high numbers. Over 5,000 were made during the war. The Germans excelled in developing these types of weapons, in part because of the Versailles Treaty, which restricted Germany from developing heavy artillery, but not rocket technology. Ultimately, the weapon would be primarily used for firing high explosive rounds, as World War II proved far too mobile a war for chemical weapons. Naval Werfer were crewed by four to five men. Empty the wagon weighed only 510 kilograms or 1,120 pounds, so they could be towed by most vehicles and maneuvered by hand. They used the same carriage adapted from the 3.7 centimeter Pack 36. The rockets had an impressive maximum range of 6,900 meters or 7,500 yards. They were finless and spin stabilized using a special exhaust system which increased accuracy. The weapon would see use on most battlefields, both offensively and defensively, including North Africa and Normandy, with the heaviest use on the Eastern Front. A 10-barreled version would appear in 1943, mounted on a half-track known as the Panzerwehr F-42. Opel made over 300 of such half-tracks, which were useful on the Eastern Front. They were often used as rapid mobile fire support to counter Soviet breakthroughs. They also mitigated one major issue associated with the 15 centimeter rockets, which was that they kicked up significant dust, giving away the crew's position. The half-track allowed for quick relocation after firing. The launcher could be quickly reloaded in 90 seconds and was able to fire three six rocket volleys every five minutes. Each tube fired separately to avoid overturning the carriage. Rockets could be fired individually or in an automatic volley fired in two-second intervals as not to disturb each other in flight. Unlike in video games, when launched, the crew took cover at least 10 meters or so away to be clear from the blast. The rockets were electronically fired through a magneto linked to igniters on the firing tubes. The rockets were unusual in that the rocket motors were located at the front of the projectile and the explosive was located in the tail. This optimized the blast and fragmentation effect, assuming the head of the rocket was buried in the ground, with the tail remaining above on landing. The rockets were highly effective against troops or lightly armored vehicles, particularly if fired en masse to saturate an area. However, the rocket design was a logistical weakness for the otherwise inexpensive weapon. The rockets were costly and complicated to produce. All right, I'm Johnny. Thanks for watching another video on German equipment. I have to struggle to try and pronounce. I hope you have a nice rest of your day, and we'll see you next time.